Hi everybody, it's Dr. Sherry Kaplan doing part two um, of last week's uh, video. And so just to recap, um, you know, uh, this talk is on brain health and trying to uh, uh, prevent cognitive decline, which is memory problems. Um, and this was because one of my patients who had come in, who's in her 40s, was concerned about her um, memory because she's noticed that it's been uh, declining and it was concerning her. Um, sorry about that. Um, and so basically, um, I just wanted to go over, so we talked about what are things that can contribute to cognitive decline. So not eating right, um, not exercising, being highly stressed, not sleeping, um, drinking too much alcohol, um, and um, you know, kind of being deficient in certain nutrients, um, having your hormones decline. So all of those are contributing factors. Obviously there is genetics, there's stuff on APOE uh, gene that you, we can also be, te uh, be tested, um, but there's other factors as well and high risk of diabetes and high sugars also contribute uh, to cognitive decline. And actually trauma and infections are obviously other things that uh, when you have inflammation in the brain, it also causes memory loss so we always want to address um, inflammation as well so so that's kind of in a nutshell a lot of the things that we look at when someone's starting to co complain of cognitive decline and actually when they're not feeling well and all these other things um, you know environmental toxins actually is another piece that we really didn't talk about but we'll talk a lot a little bit towards the end of this uh, video but essentially we accumulate toxins and we can accumulate toxins in our brain uh, that again can affect our uh, memory um, and concentration. So um, today I want to talk a little bit more specifics about diets. You know, we talked a little bit about flavonoids. So, you know, eating, I guess the way I would tell people is to eat all the colors of the rainbows. Every color has a different phytonutrient that has a different benefit. They're very anti-inflammatory. Uh, flavonoids happen to be more of the berries, like the blues and the reds. Um, and uh, that is very anti-inflammatory and has shown to improve neurogenesis which is the ability to create new neurons um, you know um Eating vegetables is very important. Again, has a lot of phytochemicals in it that helps with our body uh, with detoxification. Um, and it, um, especially cruciferous vegetables, so broccoli, cauliflower, and kale, um, they actually help with detoxification. There's studies on uh, preventing DNA damage or protecting our cells. Um, so eating a lot of those uh, vegetables are really important for us. Um, making sure that we get a good amount of omega-3. So so eating fish and seafood um, is another way to get omega-3. Um, the thing you have to be careful with is <clears throat> sorry, is that, you know, certain fishes and seafoods and stuff whatnot, um, you know, can have high PCBs and mercury. Um, so it's kind of like that balance where we want to try to get as much omega-3 without increasing other toxins in our brain. Um, what else? Um, you know, uh, because we want to increase omega-3 relative to omega-6, because that's more anti-inflammatory, and again, we talked about how inflammation causes uh, cognitive decline and impairs neurogenesis, um, that we actually have to be careful about uh, vegetable oils. So vegetable oils are omega-6, and they're highly processed, and there are some studies um, on that and cognition, um, especially in people who are ApoE4 genes. Um, so we want to avoid that because that will speed up cognitive decline. We know trans fats aren't good for us cardiovascularly as well as for brain health. Um, watching again sugars, we talked about again how you know having elevated sugars um, accelerate uh, um, cells dying. Um, also, uh, it may be the new um, type 3 diabetes, um, so which it contributes to that cognitive decline. Um, you know, processed foods are also uh, impair neurogenesis. We need to make new neurons as we age. We want to keep our brain function. 
Um, nuts and seeds are very healthy and good fats and you know we kind of come from a world of uh, that we were told fats bad but if you think about it you know um, our cell membranes make up most a significant part of our body and our brain is a significant weight in proportion to our body and guess what it's made of it's made out of fat so if you're not eating sufficient amount of fat we can't tell or change our cell membranes or make those new neurons if we don't have the proper building blocks and we don't want trans fats because trans fats, um, if they're incorporated in the cell membrane, are very stiff and they can't go through and they don't flex the same way as phosphatidylcholine and serine and other uh, fats that are incorporated in the cell membrane so that when they're going through a narrow vessel that, uh, you know, the trans fats, just, those cells just don't flex and get through and that causes, you know, obstruction. Um, so we want nice fluid cells that help with communication between cells and um, could um, go through the vascular tree. Um, the other things that we want to do is limit processed meats. Again, it's not healthy for us. Um, again, you know, being not, I, I'm not a big fan of totally of being a uh, vegetarian, but I think eating a lot of, um, you know, vegetables and avoiding like high processed meats and especially um, uh, meat that's been, um, you know, had, uh, the animals have eaten a lot of grains and are exposed to a lot of antibiotics and other chemicals isn't the greatest thing for us. Um, hydration is really important um, so the more hydrated the more ability to, for cells to communicate with each other ability to detox um, is really important um, back to diet you know I still kind of believe avoiding gluten and for some people dairy because that's infl uh, causes inflammation specifically inflammation in the gut and we talked about the gut brain connection in the past so if your guts inflamed your brains more likely to be inflamed and I told you inflammation inhibits neurogenesis um, and so some other interesting points so a lot of people you know okay I want to eat so much sugar so they'll use artificial sugars and you know I used to drink Diet Coke uh, a lot back uh, back in the days and things that I had noticed that when I was drinking a lot of that is my sweet tooth increased and that's a whole other story but that um, studies have come out since that showed that women or uh, clients who eat um, a lot of artificial sugars specifically Diet Pop had increased abdominal girth and weight gain um, so that's not good but actually what else has come out is that um, there was a study uh, that looked at uh, this was actually a study um, sorry I'm just looking at this uh, so that basically it was a study that looked at over 4,000 uh, people from uh, uh, around the age of 45 um, and this was like a 10-year study and what they looked at is if you drank one to six artificial sweetened drinks uh, a week you had a significantly increased risk of dementia and stroke and I would actually even extrapolate it so it's not just diet pop but it, any foods or you know that we're taking that has uh, these artificial sugars um, so because they're a neurotoxin so you know yeah you think you're kind of doing a good job because you're eating less sugar but in fact um, you're actually uh, adding to your toxic load so that's not great um, and then the other little piece that's new is uh, there was again a recent study that was um, done by several different universities one of which was U of T which showed that uh, the you know the fluoride in our drinking water can actually act as a neurotoxin and what the study looked at was um, mothers um, uh, fluoride uh, intake um, actually they were looking at their uh, urine uh, to look at uh, their fluoride load and what they found was that uh, the women who had a higher uh, fluoride uh, intake had uh, their babies had uh, lower cognition um, so what it sort of shows is that the fluoride is toxic to that developing brain um, so you know there's a lot of things that we do that um, you know cause um, problems and so it's really important to sort of really avoid those toxic uh, exposures I mean our environment is so much more toxic today than it was 40 years ago and so we need to the ability to help detox we need to avoid the exposure in the first place is always the best way and then um, each of us are um, 
genetically predisposed differently on how we're able to metabolize the toxins. And for some of us, unfortunately, those uh, we have a decreased ability to detoxify, and so our toxic level is higher, and that causes inflammation and cognitive decline. So really, everything is about like um, how we eat, how we manage our stress, how we sleep, um, you know, are we exercising, are we doing all the things right? And I think in today's world, it's more and more important to make sure that we're doing things right so that we can stay healthier longer. Anyways, this is the end of the segment of Ask Your Doctor. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you hear, like us on Facebook. If you have questions you want me to answer, um, email us at info at vitalitymd.com. Um, if you uh, like, again, you know, uh, like what you see, share it with your friends. That would be awesome. And until next time, have a great week.